In this video, we're going to go over graphing rational expressions. And we're going to take this one as our first example. Uh, before we get into it, though, there are basically four things you need to consider when graphing rational functions. The first, you must simplify the equation. That means you need to factor it and reduce. The second is you need to identify, from there you can identify vertical asymptotes and or holes by finding the excluded values. And that's where the denominator equals zero. Then you can identify the horizontal asymptotes or the slant asymptotes. Slant asymptotes are sometimes called oblique asymptotes. In your the graph of this function, you will have either horizontal uh, asymptotes or slant asymptotes, but you will not have both. And you may have neither. Okay, so uh, this Part of finding a, a horizontal and slant asymptotes is a bit challenging, so let's look at it carefully. Uh, they're basically a rational expression is one polynomial over another. And what you want to look at are the leading exponents, you know, the leading exponent in the numerator and the leading exponent in the denominator. Here I have made an expression here ax to the n plus c divided by bx to the m plus d and calling these n and m our leading exponents. So there are four things to keep in mind here. And you may want to make a little card of this in case your book or your uh, teacher in your course isn't making this very clear. If n is less than m, then there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, which is also the x-axis. If n equals m, then there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals a over b. If n is greater than m, then there's no horizontal asymptote, and there may or may not be a slant asymptote. If n is bigger than m by 1, then there's a slant asymptote at y equals the quotient, and that is for another video. So these are the points you have to look at to identify horizontal or slant asymptotes. The fourth thing you have to look at overall when graphing a rational expression is to find the x and y intercepts. You can do this very simply by using your graphing calculator and looking at your table of values. You also could find it um, manually by looking uh, for the x-intercepts by setting the numerator to zero and finding the values of x. You can also find the y-intercepts by setting x equal to zero and finding then the value of y. So let's take this rational expression here, uh, x squared plus 5x plus 6 over x squared plus 7x plus 12. And the first thing we're going to do is simplify this. So if I factor this out, I'm going to get, well, x plus 2 times x plus 3 uh, gives us the numerator, and x plus 3 times x plus 4 gives us the denominator. Now we have to simplify a little more. We can reduce uh, like terms here. This and this are the same. So after reducing, we're left with x plus 2 over x plus 4. Now, now that we've simplified this, we can begin to go down our list here. The excluded values. Well, where is the denominator 0? Uh, even though we've reduced this out, we still have to consider this point here. An obvious excluded value is where x is negative 4. Because if x was negative 4, this would be 0, and we cannot have 0 in the denominator. So one excluded value is that x equals negative 4. The other excluded value, even though it was reduced out, is that x equals negative 3. Okay, this also tells us where our vertical asymptotes and our holes are. Our vertical asymptotes are where we have excluded values. So there is one here. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. Now, this is not a vertical asymptote. This is going to be a hole because it was reduced out. So there's going to be a hole at x equals negative 3. OK. Now, let's look for our horizontal asymptotes. We have to ask ourselves, well, first of all, what are the 
leading exponents here, it's x squared and x squared. Um, how do they relate to each other? Well, they're the same. And when n equals m, then there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals a over b. Well, the values here for a and b, although we don't usually write it, the value here for a is 1 and b is 1 also. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals, well, that's really 1 over 1. We don't need to write it that way. We can just write it as 1. There's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. If we have a horizontal asymptote, we will not have a slant asymptote. So there is none here. Now for the x-intercept. Uh, let's set the numerator equal to 0. So we only need to deal with this value this time. x plus 2 equals 0. Well, hmm, that's x equals negative 2, isn't it? So there's an x-intercept at negative 2, 0. And for the y-intercept, there we set x total equal to the overall value of x in the equation equal to 0. So that would be like saying 0 plus 2 over 0 plus 4. And that's 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So we have this uh, y-intercept. I'm going to write this up here. We have a y-intercept. Well, that's where x is 0, and then y is 1 half. So these are the points we need to graph uh, this rational expression. And here it is graphed out. We have a vertical asymptote here at x is negative 4. So the way you draw your asymptotes is by making a dashed line. And this is uh, one time that colored pencils can make this easier to read and kind of fun. x is negative 4. We have a horizontal asymptote at y is 1. We have uh, let's see, we have a hole here at negative 3, and we can plug in negative 3 and find a value, but we have to remember that there's a hole there. Uh, let's see, the x-intercept is negative 2 in this case, the y-intercept is 0, a half. To plot these lines, you can either use a table of values from your graphing calculator, or you can um, just simply plug in points and find them. I hope you found this to be a good introduction to graphing rational expressions. I intend to do some more sample problems where uh, the horizontal asymptotes or the slant asymptotes are a bit different. Thanks for watching.